What up, guys? It is EJ, and welcome to another edition of Next Up with my friend, my new bestie, yes. Elle Winter. How you doing? I'm so good. How are you? I'm great. I'm glad that you're here. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, we were talking earlier, yes. and you were saying how people think that what the blonde, what was it? Blondes are not as intelligent, right? Because well, people think that you're, well, you are a blonde. I'm I'm not a natural blonde. <laughs> this is a recent development. <laughs> it's slowly going away. I've gotten mixed reviews on it, so I'm a little. I think it looks unsure. good. Thank you so much. Well, you, well, I, you know, you have to check out my Instagram. See what you think of my brunette. How long ago uh, did you go blonde? A month ago. Mm. A month and a half ago. It's really damaged my hair, though. Like I woke up and like my hair was a different length on one side. It's so, so I hear people talk about damaged hair and stuff like that. So yeah. what does that mean? I never I got into the hype. I was like, oh, what are they talking about? That's just my hairstyle is trying to like get me. Sell me some yeah, new yeah. product. Get out of here. Like, I don't totally. want it. So right. I never believed it. And then one day I woke up and I was like, oh, my God. There are two different lengths here. That is because bleach is really bad for your hair. So people that like regularly bleach their hair, it's yeah. not good for them? It's not good for you. So I, no I need idea. to know. Like, I don't know how people have. I'm not saying this is. This is all my hair, guys. Apparently, L's <laughs> a uh, hairstylist, guys. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I am I have some support right now. So this is oh, not boy. what it looks like, you know. <laughs> I just got the. No, it's all good. Listen, it's yours. You bought it. Yeah, that's true. It is mine. <laughs> Let's talk about you growing up in New York City. Yeah, Where'd yeah. you grow up? So I was in the Upper East Side, nice. born and Ooh, raised. Yeah. Some money. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's been fun. I love New York. It's the best. So at what point, you know, growing up in New York, you were like, man, I really want to start singing. I want to do this. Yeah. Well, my mom always says I was singing and talking at the same time. Really? So I grew up, you know, performing for my family, my friends, being like that annoying kid, just going around to everyone at You're family singing. holidays, like, listen to me perform. But um, at 12, I was discovered by Radio Disney and That's I was on tour with it. them and it's taken off since then. Yeah. Um. At those, were, was your mom like pushing you, you know, like, cause how mothers do when they find out that you have a talent? Like, look, 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 look my baby can sing. Go ahead. You know, my mom just wants me and my sister to be as happy as we can be. Really? So she saw that this is what really makes me so, so happy. And she's obviously supportive and wants wants me to be, you know, oh, happy always. Mom. Yeah. Aww. She's the best. Hi, mom. I'm so lucky. She's right there. Hi, mama. <laughs> So you started touring at 12? Yeah. So Radio Disney, I was on their program, The Next Big Thing. Right. And, and they put me on a national tour and on Disney Channel. And it was like my childhood dream, you that know, like to be on Disney. Right? 2012? 2012. That was a good year. Right. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, like, to, to think. Because I think touring as an adult is is insane with yeah. the, the schedule and things like right. that. How was it doing it as a child? Well, since I was in school at the time, they were actually very flexible with me. Like all of the tour dates were on the weekends, which okay, nice. was very convenient. And I would go with my family and, and I was just so excited that like I didn't mind the crazy hours and mm -hmm. the rough travel schedule. You know, I was just literally living my dream. So you would have to, I guess, start on like, was it a Friday? And yeah, then... Friday after school, I would just leave school. I'd leave my like PE class early. We'd have to go to this. Uh, out, yeah, I'd be like, I'm out of here. I don't even like PE. And I would go on a plane and go somewhere fun. Perform. What school was that? PS what? I actually went to a regular uh, high school. Well, it was really? a different elementary school. And then I applied out for high school. Nice. Yeah. That's so legit. <laughs> so what was like a normal day for you on that Friday? You would, like you said, you would uh, yeah. leave PE class. Then I'd you leave... would do what? <laughs> and I would, you know, well, it depends. Like during high school, I would probably leave school. I didn't do an after school sport. So I always said like my sport was going to the studio after school and working with different writers and producers and mm -hmm. writing music or going to a dance class. Right. Yes, yeah, so that was my schedule really. Wow. Yeah. Let's talk about your new song, which I heard. And yes. I was like, oh, my gosh, this song is clearly about someone. Because <laughs> you don't <laughs> sing with that type of like passion. <laughs> And have it not be about someone. Yeah, well, it's actually a funny story. Okay, so I'm all when ears. I wrote this song, I was in London. I had just gone to London, and I was going through this breakup. And I was like, "Am I really gonna write about something so down and and dark when I'm in like London for the first time doing music?" Well, you know, it doesn't sound down and dark. It well, sounds like an upbeat pop song. This is the plot twist. So the song's actually about my sister oh. and her love life. So on my way to the studio that day, she was calling me, telling me about this amazing date she went on. And how they kind of randomly met. And I wanted to write this song about how we can meet people by chance and feel like they could even be the one. And since writing it, I've experienced that like hope and excitement you get when you meet someone. And it's really real. So I'm, I'm happy I, I have a song that articulates this message, you know? Yeah, because I was like, man, this cannot be about a breakup. Cause <laughs> it's, it's so upbeat. And I feel like, you know, most songs that are like about right. a breakup are super sad and it's super slow. Yeah. No, and, I got you know. those too, though. We, oh, we got do? We got some of those too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, is that like, like 
my A and R and and my manager is like, oh god, this is the breakup album. Like this is like the one love song on it. And I feel like that is the most relatable thing. Everybody has gone through a breakup, yeah. and that's why I feel like so many people uh, connect with songs right. about breaking up, although it's super sad. Yeah, no, I've been performing these songs um, a while, for a while now, and I, I hear people come up some unreleased songs that actually do talk about the breakup and and the sad things and i see women come up to me and tell me oh my god my ex-boyfriend does the same thing da, 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 da. screw boys I'm like okay right yeah like, <laughs> right i think it's so relatable though you yeah. know what i'm saying mm. so when you're writing those songs like what are your writing process do you keep a journal do you, yeah. you do so at home sometimes before bed i'll journal and i'll write what i'm feeling and then it sometimes accidentally like, turns into a song and i'm just doing it to get get my emotions out but sometimes I end up like writing you know a full song or something like that but right. I, I keep things on my phone too and then I'll go to a session meet with a different producer or writer and I'll say hey this is what I'm dealing with today can mm -hmm. we write a song about this and these are the ideas I have and they'll be like oh cool I'm going through something similar this is my take on it do you is it like do you hear the melody in your head as you're writing or is it do you have to hear a beat afterwards it really depends uh -huh. you know sometimes I start with the melody like sometimes I'll go to the studio and um, a producer will play me something and I'll just start s laying down a melody and then I let that inspire the lyrics. Like if it's a really upbeat song or melody that I'm creating, I probably don't want to write about, you know, my ex-boyfriend. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I want to write about the new guy I'm seeing, you know? So it, it kind of depends. I think it, it takes a special type of talent to just to, to sit and write a song because I feel like it's so hard to put, you know, words together and make them make sense. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, and, and over these past few years, I guess since the Disney program and, and where I am now, I've really fallen in love with the writing process. And I think you just can't shy away from talking about what you're actually going through. Mm -hmm. Like for me, when I was younger, I'd be like, okay, everything has to be perfect. My photos have to be perfect. Like I have a clear story, like memorized speech of what to say, all of that but that's not what I want to hear from the artists I love it's also not life and that's not life yeah right. and what's beautiful about music is that you can hear someone's pain and and connect with it and not feel alone so I think that's what I love about it, it brings people together do you find that it was because you, you you're definitely older than when you were when you were touring right. with Disney do you find that it is I guess harder to not necessarily break away but you know kind of be your own person and growing into an adult and writing songs that not necessarily may be about you know kids issues and things like that right well since then it's been a minute and I've been working with different producers and writers and I've had that chance to explore different sounds and mm -hmm. I've tried the the things that would appeal to maybe that demographic more and then on the other side of the spectrum, other songs that are completely different. So I think I've had that that exploration, and right. I've you know come to a place that has a message that could appeal to I think Everybody. everyone. You know. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what's next? What's next? Hopefully, release an EP this summer nice. and tour would be the dream. Yeah. I hope it all works out. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. It was so fun. I feel You're like I could best. talk. For th I know. I don't want it to be over. I was like, I'm no way. You know, <laughs> this whole working thing, forget about it. Let's yeah. continue to talk. <laughs> exactly. I <I'm> could. <laughs> El, thank you so much thank for stopping by. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you soon. El Winter, everybody.